live from Case at 12. The news at 530 starts right now. We begin with an auto repair shop on Blanco Road that caught fire just hours ago, burning some cars there. The fire drew a large response from the San Antonio Fire Department, and we know that heat played a big role in that. Our Avery Everett just spoke to a battalion chief there and joins us live from the scene. Avery, we know that fire's out now. Yeah, fire crews just left here, but about a dozen people are still looking through what's left of this auto repair shop on Blanco Road. The son of the building owner says no one was hurt. We can't see much destruction from the outside, but we're told inside a few cars were damaged. Crews worked out here for about two hours, and they say they have the fire with it out within 30 minutes. They're still trying to figure out what exactly caused the fire and are investigating. But what we do know, 17 fire units were dispatched to this building. Battalion Chief Mark Trevino just told me that a huge response has to do with the intense heat today. Really paying attention to the, uh, the, the welfare of the fire crews because it's so hot and it's, it's so humid. So we do have ambulances out here and uh, everybody to, to keep them cool. Within the last 30 minutes, we saw those ambulances and we also saw a bus to keep those firefighters cold while they were battling this fire. Reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Avery, thank you. Now to a domestic violence situation that ended with a woman shot in a motel. It happened near the Super 8 Motel on I-10 and Casa Bella Street. Police say a 20-year-old woman and her boyfriend were arguing. At some point during that fight, police say the boyfriend shot her and went to another motel across the street for help. Police arrived and arrested the boyfriend but were unable to find that weapon. She, she indicated where he might have fled to. Other officers went to that location, which is a motel just down the street, just a few blocks down the street, and uh, the officers were able to detain him there. The woman is now recovering in University Hospital. We're working to find out what charges the man is facing. Well, the Bear County Sheriff's Department is asking for your help in finding a man wanted for allegedly abusing an infant. 25-year-old Corey Alexander Barry is wanted in connection with the severe abuse of a five-month-old baby. Sheriff Javier Salazar says on Friday the infant's biological mother took the baby to Christus Children's Hospital, where doctors tell deputies they found broken bones and bite marks. When deputies interviewed the mother, they say she eventually admitted that she and Barry caused those injuries. That mother's name is Jada Rod and she is charged with a third degree felony for injury to a child. During questioning, deputies also say she tried misdirecting them on Barry's location until she did give up some information that was needed. If you have recently seen Barry or know anything about where he is, you're asked to immediately call the Bear County Sheriff's Office at 210-335-6000. You can remain anonymous. The woman whose body was found along I-35 Friday morning has now been identified. According to the Schertz Police Department, her name was 29-year-old Dominique Robbins and she lived in New Braunfels. Her body was found in the grass on the shoulder of I-35 South near Hubertus Road. Information about the cause and manner of her death are still under investigation, but police are considering her death suspicious. If you have any information on the case, please call Schertz Police Department at 210-619-1200. Well, a man has been charged for allegedly shooting and injuring another man in a road rage incident on the city's northwest side. 26-year-old Darwin Gomez was arrested for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This happened Saturday night on Bandera Road. Police at the scene say the two men got into a confrontation on the road when Gomez allegedly opened fire and hit the man's shoulder. The man was taken to the hospital and that suspect was later identified as Gomez. Well, an argument between a father and a son took a violent turn when that father was injured with a machete early Saturday morning. This happened on Lorraine Lane near San Pedro Avenue. Officers found the 55-year-old man with a cut to his left ankle. He told police he was arguing with his son, Lavario, when he grabbed a machete and swung at him. SAPD was able to get Lavario into custody without incident. His bond now set at $60,000. <laughs> Well, still ahead, Prince's first demo tape is up for auction. We'll talk, we'll talk the songs and the record from when we return. And a new law signed by the governor this week seeks to outlaw discrimination based on hair type. We'll discuss the details about it and how people in San Antonio are reacting to that news.
This week, a significant moment happening in Austin. The governor put his signature on the Crown Act, ceremoniously making it a law in Texas. It outlaws race-based hair discrimination, ensuring people with braids, twists, locks, and afros are treated fairly. As Alyssa Cole reports, some women are describing the measure as progress. As we commemorate Juneteenth this month, women in San Antonio are reflecting on the Crown Act law that will prohibit discrimination based on hair texture. I'm honestly glad it happened. It's crazy that it had to happen this way. Professional lactician Brittany Grant at Braids on Fire in San Antonio has been doing hair since she was a little girl. I want to watch it clearly. As she says this new law has a profound meaning just like locks, a style rooted in cultural identity, heritage, and personal transformation. For, for black people, it's definitely a spiritual journey. Our hair is our strength. We're sun people. We get our energy from the sun. and. When I'm talking to my clients, I'm giving them energy. Their hair is giving me energy. And it's just, it's a bond. You Grant describes a conversation she had with one of her clients who's considering chopping his locks off after college in an effort to be considered for more corporate jobs. Here's what he told her. And I'm starting a new job up north in Dallas, and it's a corporate job. And, you know, they haven't seen my hair, and I'm kind of nervous. I don't really know how I should have it, but I don't want to cut my locks. So one of Grant's clients, Kristen Sharp, hopes to see enforcement of the Crown Act among organizations and businesses. There's a lot of companies companies are missing out on great people. I'm glad I did start the journey because now everyone sees me for who Kristen really is. Grant says moving forward, she wants to see more representation. I would like to see uh, them using more people of color who have natural hairstyles in their marketing campaigns. Austin was the first city in Texas to approve the Crown Act last year in June. Texas and 21 other states have also made the Crown Act law. It will go into effect statewide September 1st. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Well, the self-titled de titled demo tape that late musician Prince used to land his first recording contract is now up for auction. Boston-based auction house RR Auction is selling the demo, originally recorded in 1976. It contains unreleased versions of songs like Just As Long As We're Together and the never-before-released Jelly Jam. Prince was just 18 years old when he recorded the tracks that he wrote, sang, and arranged himself. The demo is part of the Marvels of Modern Music auction that ends on Thursday. I can't wait to see how much that goes for. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's pretty very cool. interesting. All right, let's take a look outside with live cam. Once again, it just looks very humid outside. At this point, you don't need me to tell you that it is hot and it's humid, but I've got to tell you anyways, it is hot and it is humid. In fact, so hot, Today's the hottest day of the year so far. We officially hit 103 degrees over at the official climate site for San Antonio at the airport. Just one degree shy of the record of 104 that was set back in 2011. Now going forward, more heat is in store this week. Triple digits feeling hotter when you factor in the humidity. Not much in terms of notable rain chances, but right now there is a strong storm approaching the far northwestern portions of the hill country. So we'll get you a look at the radar after the break. So our Father's Day did include some outdoors time. <laughs> so we really felt that sweltering heat, but there are some places on the radar that we know there's a tiny bit of activity. A little bit of rain cooled air, but also a strong and actually now severe thunderstorm just south of Junction. That is slowly working its way farther off to the southeast, so it could approach the far northwestern portions of Kerr County here in just a bit. So yes, we'll talk about the heat, we'll talk about the humidity, but first I do want to get you a look at the activity that we are monitoring right now. You can see for the most part, we are quiet across south central Texas, but as we zoom this in, we've got a pair of two storms here. One just to the southwest of Fredericksburg, south of 290. That actually is north of Kerrville there as well, and then this severe thunderstorm that has been warned for hail up to the half dollar size and 60 mile per hour wind gusts. Of course, heavy rain and some lightning associated with that as well. It is slowly working its way down to the east southeast at about 15 miles per hour. So we'll monitor how well this can hold together and see how far south it can make it into northern Kerr County here over the next 30 minutes to an hour or so. So we'll keep eyes on it. But other than that, it is just hot and it is humid out there. Looking at the dew points, how we measure all of the moisture in the air, upper 60s and 70s. So it is definitely noticeable. 
And of course, as we've been talking about for the past several days, this past weekend and even late last week, that helps those heat index values really crank up white numbers, actual air temperatures. Again, we've been able to climb to 103 here in San Antonio. Current air temperature is 105 in Castroville, 101 up in Bull Verde. But these yellow numbers, that's the feels like temperature, what it feels like to your body when you step outside because of all of that moisture in the air. Once again, climbing into the 110 to even 150 degree range in some locations. So just continue to take it easy out there in the heat. If you are stepping out for any evening plans with dad, air conditioning, not a bad idea. All right, as we head into the upcoming work week, more heat and for the most part, humidity is in store. We're going to start off our Monday morning in the muggy upper 70s and a few low 80s I think will be possible with a few morning clouds. But then as we advance on in time through the lunchtime hour, more sunshine takes back over. So temperatures are already climbing into the low 90s, feeling like the triple digits. And then I do think those actual air temperatures will manage to climb into the triple digits once again. I think maybe even a degree hotter. We've got a forecast high around 103 to 104 here in San Antonio, 105 potentially out there in Floresville and Wilson County, 104 in New Braunfels, 105 in Hondo, 103 up in Bandera. But the moisture is still with us tomorrow as well. So as we overlay the forecast heat index value, for tomorrow afternoon. Very similar to what we've seen out there today, approaching that 110 to 115 degree range in some spots. So continue to stay hydrated. This area of high pressure anchored just off to our southwest right now, still the main driver of our weather pattern. And for the most part throughout the first half of the week, that still is going to be the big influencer, which is why it's still going to be very hot out there. But as we head into the later portions of the week, that could ever so slightly try to work its way farther off to the west and as it does so maybe temperatures coming down a few degrees it is still going to be hot it's still going to be muggy into next weekend as well but on the flip side of that, we also may need to monitor for a very, very stray shower or storm that could try to work in Wednesday and Thursday. Not promise, but that's just what we'll be monitoring over the next couple of days, Courtney. Fingers crossed. All right. Thank you so much, Mia. All right, Larry, the College World Series today, and we know TCU had that elimination game. Yeah, they face nationally ranked Virginia today, and TCU looked good from start to finish in this one as they live to see another game. Plus, it is Father's Day, and we're going to check in with the Dallas Cowboys, who celebrate with some pretty cool neckwear coming up. How about that little horn frog was all pumped up for TCU's elimination game today in big board sports. So TCU faced number seven Virginia in an elimination game of the College World Series in Omaha and the horn frogs lived to see another game. Top of the six TCU leading two to one when Elijah Nunez adds to their lead with an RBI single to right center field and TCU goes up three to one. They never trailed in this win or go home ball game. Nunez went two for five with that one ribby. Top of the eighth the horn frogs tack on a very important run. Austin Davis with a runner on second base sends the ball to center field and just over the outfielder's head. And that's a good thing for TCU as Anthony Silva scores and make it four to two Horn Frogs. And TCU wins the game four to three. They'll next play on a Tuesday and face the loser of Florida, Oral Roberts, who played later tonight. Virginia has been eliminated. Bruce Bochy and the Texas Rangers hosting the Toronto Blue Jays this afternoon. Once down 6 0, the Rangers come back behind Leote Tavares. Bottom five tied at six. Tavares hits it up the middle by the pitcher and into center field. That scores a run, and the Rangers take the lead for good 7 to 6. Tavares went three for five with three runs batted in, and the Rangers win it by a final of 11 to 7, taking two or three from the Blue Jays elsewhere in the ALS. The Astros lost to the Reds 9 7. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Friday night at Steel High School, NFL running back Malcolm Brown held a football camp and a cheer camp for the Cibolo community. The Steel Knight grade and former Texas Longhorn running back really loves giving back to his community and San Antonio. Some of his football friends on hand to help include Rashad Wisdom, Ryan Simmons, Frank Harris, Richard Torres, and current Steel Knights quarterback Chad Warner. Malcolm, who says he was blown away by the support, was asked what does he want the kids to get from this camp? Man, to be honest, man, I really wanted to give these kids an experience um, that could that could possibly just, 
you know, expose them to new things. We're, we're doing some basic stuff, but I know at the end of the day, just getting some of these guys out here that are part of the community and the NFL, college players, whatever it may be, just seeing these, you know, seeing these guys out here is uh, could motivate these kids in a different way that we, you know, will never know, man. So that's my whole thing behind this. A little over 48 hours and that thing was filled up, man. Um, 350 football participants and 125 cheer participants, man. And a little over 48 hours, it filled up, man. So I'm just thankful. I'm grateful for, for the community to come out here and make this thing special. Brackenridge High School grade and former L.A. Ram Ramon Richards did a very cool thing yesterday as he gives back to San Antonio. He held a camp at Alamo Stadium free for SAISD kids in 6th through ninth grade. His NFL friend Tristan Jackson, who plays for the Minnesota Vikings, was there to help. The kids learned about football, how to be a great teammate, and they got lunch. Ramon loves to help inner city kids and delivered these words of motivation, words that helped him make it to the NFL. My main message, I'm looking at the camera for this, my main message, don't let anyone's disbelief in you be stronger than your belief in yourself. Don't let nobody discourage you. Let that motivation of what you can possibly become encourage you, and you can make anything uh, anything come true. I promise you. What do you want them to take away from you? Uh, most importantly, just they got to work. They got to work in order to make what they want, uh, their dreams come true. And then secondly, that, you know, my, I'm here, Tristan Jackson is here, for them to see that, you know, they can also make it happen. Um, just because they go to an inner city school doesn't mean that they can't make their dreams come true. So that's what I want them to know. One day last week during the Texans two-day mandatory minicamp, the son of head coach D'Amico Ryans went to practice with his dad. His son MJ got up at 5 in the morning with his dad and went to work. I mean, how cool is that for him? Watching NFL players go through drills, and you know they all treated MJ like he's part of the team. Ryans, who has two sons and a daughter with his wife, said the Texans posted a camera outside of practice, and they asked the team, what does Father's Day mean to them? What does Father's Day mean to you? Being a word to me, I wouldn't be here without my pops. Love you, Pops. A lot, actually. It means a lot. I'm a father. Great fathers out there. I salute y'all. Thanks for everything he did for me. It means everything. You know, get to spend time with my family. Just being a father, me have responsibilities. Appreciate all the sacrifice. Thanks for serving our country. Man, shout out Pop, man. First Father's Day. Appreciate you guys. For all the single moms out there who take uh, that father's role. Happy Father's Day to you, too. I get to celebrate my blessing. It's tough for me to be grateful for everything he's done for me. It means a lot. I love my son with that. Dallas Cowboys have been off since June 8th when they wrapped up their mandatory two-day minicamp of OTAs and off-season drills. That's it until training camp starts late July in Oxnard, California. Still, a lot of the team will go to the Star in Frisco to study, get rehab, and hang with their teammates. Recently, the team surprised some of the Cowboys' dads with a pretty cool gift. Check it out. Yeah, that's, it. that's my first father's day. Oh, thank you. Happy thank you so much. Thank you. Can I open it? Open it. Hey, it's high. What? I like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! Oh, no, no, I'm I'm so yeah, this one. Good. How cool is that? Represent the town, yeah. Thank you. It made my heart smile. I appreciate it. Awesome. Made my heart smile. How cool is that, right? So special. I love it. Thanks for sharing that story. That makes me happy. Right. <laughs> right we'll be right back. For well, African Americans, self-determination is important. These are self-made men and women. Mm -hmm. And so you find that they're buying up property. They're accumulating these assets. As we celebrate Juneteenth this weekend, we are giving you an opportunity to learn more about black history in San Antonio and how the culture has impacted our Alamo City. In just a few minutes on KSAT Plus and our KSAT YouTube channel, we will be streaming an episode of KSAT Explains that looks into San Antonio's hidden black history. We will also feature several stories from Jesse DeGollado taking a look at slavery in Bear County and how Juneteenth is being remembered here. It starts at six, that's just a few minutes from now on KSAT Plus, as well as the KSAT YouTube channel, and it's a good one. All right, let's get you one final look at the radar. New severe thunderstorm warning out for northwestern Kerr County and far western Gillespie County. That westernmost storm possible of hail up to a golf ball size just to the southeast of Junction and some 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That's slowly moving to the east at about 20 miles per hour, so we'll keep eyes on both of those storms. Other than that, it is hot and humid. Courtney, it's going to be that way as we head into the upcoming work week. Buckle up and get used to it. All right. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers out there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here tonight on the Night Beat. Have a great evening. Stay cool.